Thank you. I, uh, I don't usually talk about automation and the loss, the potential loss of jobs when I argue for basic income uh, uh, for reasons that, that, I, that I think he alluded to is that, is that you don't want to talk about just about the future, but, but, you, but he's focusing here on the here and now, and I think that's important. I think there are other aspects of the here and now and the automation issue that people don't talk about as much. People think about, oh, well, when that virtue far off day comes when there aren't any more jobs, then let's talk about basic income. Well, actually, automation has been going on for hundreds of years. It's always meant more jobs than, it's always meant more jobs than in the past eventually. But <clears throat> even when it does that, it disrupts the jobs that we're, we have. And people, people are not interchangeable parts. They spend their lives building up skills. They learn skills. They do what they're supposed to do. They learn skills. They take a job. And then suddenly, their skills are not needed anymore. And they go from a good middle class position down to the bottom of the labor market. And this has been going on for hundreds of years. We had a Luddite movement 200 years ago, which people who were being, their jobs were being put out by, uh, by textile mills, we were going around smashing textile mach text machines. These were not anti-technology people. These were people who were losing their income and were giving nothing else to replace it and having to go down to the bottom of a very unequal and desperate economy. There was nothing irrational about the Luddite movement. We we need a basic income now. We needed it 200 years ago when the Luddites were around to protect people like this against the churning of the economy that is caused by the automation that we've been having for hundreds of years. We need basic income for another reason, to make sure that we get our share. Whenever there's economic growth caused by automation or whatever else, that means that there's more to go around for everyone. That means we could all, we could all work the same and consume more. Or we could all work less and consume the same. Or we could work a little bit less and consume a little bit more. But the typical worker, the average person, has not gotten, has not doing any better financially since the 1970s. A person doing an equivalent job to yours in the 1970s probably had about the same work hours and about the same uh, re uh, the same real wage adjusted for inflation as you have now. The gains of all that incredible automation that we've had since the 1970s have gone almost exclusively to the top 1 or 2 percent of the population. We need a basic income so that, so that we can get our share in that. We have an incentive problem and I think people who oppose basic income aren't looking at the right in at the incentive problems that we have in the country we have an incentive problem where employers don't have an incentive to pay good wages they don't have an incentive to share the benefits of automation with their workers when the worker has the power to say no to a job that has poor wages and poor working conditions, that gives the employers more of an incentive. We need basic income, not just to cushion the blow, but we need basic income to give us that power to demand, an, to, to demand a better share of the automation that we're all helping to create by, by being part of the working economy that creates this. A basic income is for all workers. People try to portray it as a basic income is for non-workers and try to oppose them against workers. That is the, uh, as, if, uh, as if policies other than basic income are good for workers. Policies other than basic income are workers, are, are things that say to workers, we're gonna make you dependent on your employer. We're gonna give you no other choice but to work for your employer. Um, that is the idea of an economy where everyone has, has, the, the, uh, has no choice but to work. Basic income puts the worker in the position where they work when they choose. It creates a voluntary participation economy instead of a mandatory participation economy. The worst thing you can do to a worker is make them dependent on their employer so they cannot, they cannot do without a job. Then it makes it very hard for them to command better wages and working conditions. Imagine the, the 90 or 95% of us or 98, 99% of us who have to work for a 
a living because we have no other choice, finally having a choice. Imagine what that can do to our working environment, what that can do to our workplace. It, uh, it's so different, it's hard to imagine that much power in the hands of the, of the typical citizen. Uh, it is, but, uh, but it, is, it is very important that, bas that, that basic income is for the middle class and for the workers and for the working class. It is power in the hands of everyone and it is exceedingly important that we do that. Uh, but even that I don't think is, is necessarily the, the most important reason why I support basic income. I support basic income because I think it's wrong for anyone to come between anyone else and the resources they need to survive. Uh, I, I think it's wrong for anyone to put conditions on the resources that other people need to survive. And we should not pretend uh, or, or we should not fail to recognize that this is exactly what we do. People try, people like to think of, uh, uh, people like to think of redistributory programs as like a forced help. It's not that we're just refusing to help people who have people who do not have enough resources to survive. It's not just that we're refusing to help, we are coming between them. There's something between you and the resources you need to survive and that is called property rights. It is that the, the land and the earth are owned by other people. Some of us own them, some of us do not. And the only way we allow people to access the resources of the earth is if you're willing to take a job for someone who owns, that, owns those resources or if you, can, if you can meet some conditions of a welfare program and they're continually making those conditions more paternalistic and harder to qualify for, putting us in the position where we have to find this job. We have to get someone else's permission to access the resources of the earth for ourselves. And it, should, it be, should it even be controversial that this is wrong? Animals are not in this situation. There are no animals and all the many, many species of animals around the world. None of them has to ask permission of a boss before they can use the resources of the earth to survive. They can they, they, do their, their, they, they do their hunting or their gathering or whatever. Early humans did not have to ask the permission of a chief or a boss or a lord in order to hunt and gather and fish and farm. They were free to do it themselves as they wanted. And even prisoners. We don't take prisoners and starve them to death as punishment. We take their liberty away, but we give them food and shelter and clothing. And that, in a way, makes the failure to find a job that you are willing and able to take. Uh, we treat it in some ways as a worse crime than the criminal offenses that we lock people up for. We don't take people's liberty for, well, at least we don't take their freedom of movement, but we, we, we take away their, their ability to feed themselves, to build themselves a house, uh, to have a place to live. People are forced to live on the street, to eat uh, someone else's garbage uh, in order to survive, to beg. Uh, but we put people in this situation, the poor, the propertyless, the, the propertyless, the fresh out of school, we force them into the situation. They're not in the situation simply because people refuse to help, but because, because we do so. And we do that creating a society that runs on fear. It is, we think, we seem to, we do this because we seem to think we have to do this. Uh, people seem to think that, that the prosperous have the right and the responsibility to tell the less prosperous what to do. And we seem to, so many of us seem convinced that that's the only way it can run, as if society will fall apart. But actually basic income is, is, is simply a market economy where income doesn't start at zero. Income doesn't have to start at zero. It doesn't have to, it doesn't, we don't have to run on fear in order to make the economy work. You know what else can make it run? Good jobs and good, good jobs and good incentives. If you want someone to work for you, instead of starving them to death or threatening them with poverty and starvation to get them to work, start them, leave them with their basic income so they have their needs met. But then if you want them to come to your, your office or your factory and work for you all day, then you offer them good wages and good working conditions. We say everyone has their price. You will find some price 
that this person will be willing to do that job for you. And that should be your responsibility. That should be, your, that should be our responsibility as a society. If we want people to come out and work, we should offer them a job that is going to make them choose to do it and want them to do it and do it with positive rewards of good wages and good working conditions not with these negative threats of saying that we're going to we're going to motivate you by fear and uh, by fear of poverty and homelessness and that is what basic income can do and i hope you'll join me in supporting it thank you